Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Ellis and today I have a really cool necklace project to share with you featuring some of the Halloween collection beads from Jesse James Beads. These beads are available at select Walmart stores as well as jessejamesbeads.com. I hope you enjoy the project and thanks for watching. Hi everyone, today we're going to be creating a really fun and beautiful necklace featuring the Skeleton King bead mix as well as these great Nightmare Before Christmas double-sided pendants. These are both available from Jesse James Beads. They are part of the Halloween collection. You can get these at Walmart as well as jessejamesbeads.com. In addition to the beads and pendant for your necklace, you're also going to need about eight inches of bead stringing wire. I'm using silver. You're going to need two crimp beads or crimp tubes. You're going to need eight six millimeter jump rings as well as one eight or 10 millimeter jump ring, a clasp, and you're going to need two sections of chain that are about six inches each. You're going to need two pairs of chain nose pliers for opening and closing jump rings, as well as a cutter tool and your standard crimper tool. To prepare your pendant, take your 8 or 10 millimeter jump ring between two pairs of chain nose pliers and twist to open. Thread your pendant on and then use the same twisting motion in reverse to close the jump ring. Set this to the side. The Skeleton Bead Bead Mix features a selection of gorgeous beads in black and white with pops of yellow. There are also several cage beads included. Take four of your cage beads out of your bead mix and let's get started. Using two pairs of chain nose pliers, open a six millimeter jump ring by twisting to open and then thread your jump ring at one of the corners on your first cage bead. Before closing the jump ring, thread on a second corner of a cage bead and use your pliers to close the jump ring back. If you have attached your cage beads at the corners in the center, you should have a point or a corner at the top and another at the bottom. Use another six millimeter jump ring and attach to the bottom corner of your two cage beads. Mm -hmm. Repeat these steps with two other cage beads so that you have two cage bead connections with a jump ring on the ends. Take your bead stringing wire and thread on your crimp bead or your crimp tube and drop it down about an inch and a half on your bead stringing wire. Thread the bead stringing wire through the bottom jump ring on your cage bead connection and loop it around and tuck it back through the crimp bead. Pull the crimp bead close to the jump ring, but not super tight. You want to leave a little bit of wiggle room here. Make sure that your bead stringing wire is not crossing within the crimp bead. Place the crimp bead within the back notch of your crimper tool and squeeze. Once you have created your crimp, turn the crimp bead to the side and place it into the front notch of the crimper tool and squeeze. This will create a more compact crimp bead. Using your cutter tool, trim off the short end of the bead stringing wire. Now we're ready to thread our beads onto our bead stringing wire. You can thread your beads in any pattern, but I'm going to thread on one of the crystal glass beads and drop that. One of the black check glass rounds. I'm going to thread on one of the floral bead caps so that the concave portion is facing away from the last bead that I thread on. And one of the large hole beads. And another one of the floral bead caps, again facing so that the concave portion is facing towards the inside of the large hole beads. That's just going to create a little cup out of our large hole bead. And another one of the black check glass beads. Thread on one of the white rondelles. Thread on one of the rhinestone spacers and a second white rondelle. Thread on one of the metallic rectangle beads a rhinestone spacer, and a second rectangle bead. Now we're going to thread on the jump ring that we added to our pendant. Once we've added our pendant, we're going to repeat the pattern to finish our beaded strand. Once we've added all of our beads to the bead stringing wire, thread on your second crimp bead or crimp tube and thread the end of your bead stringing wire through the bottom jump ring on your cage bead connection and loop around and back down through your crimp bead and pull everything down tight. Making sure that your bead stringing wire is not crossing within the crimp bead, place your crimp tube into the back notch of your crimper tool and squeeze. Once you have crimped, now you want to place the crimp bead into the front notch of the crimp tool sideways and squeeze to make it more compact. 
use your cutter tool to trim off any remaining bead stringing wire. Using two pairs of chain nose pliers, open another six millimeter jump ring and thread it to the top corner of your cage beads on one side of your necklace. Before closing the jump ring, thread on the end of one of your chain pieces and close the jump ring. Repeat this step on the other side of the necklace before closing the jump ring, thread on the end of your second chain piece. Using two pairs of chain nose pliers, also attach six millimeter jump rings and a clasp to the ends of your chain pieces. Now your necklace is complete and you have a beautiful necklace that has a double sided pendant that you can wear either direction or when you're wearing it if it flips over you've got a great scene on either side and a fantastic look that will last all through the Halloween season.